you have that's very interesting is ABS cools pretty quickly. Um, if it cools differentially, it'll curl up like fried bologna in a, like bologna in a frying pan. So what'll happen, one of our most common errors of bed adhesion, this is why we use the hairspray. Let's see, where is one? I don't believe I'm not gonna find one. We usually have one laying around because it happens all the time. I don't know where it is. Anyway, oh, there's a little bit on this. I don't know if you can see on this, but if you look at this box, see how the corners pulled up a little bit? Oh yeah, I can. That's because, because it cooled faster than the rest and it started shrinking. And it pulled up. And what happens is that this doesn't know that happened, so it keeps on, it just compresses that molten filament a little more on those spots. So it winds up self-correcting, so you have like these rocker bottoms on things sometimes. I'm, I'm really surprised I don't have some around here. I usually, usually have something that's really obviously off. Um, but yeah, that's that's how that happens. I've Does seen that happen while it's printing, or yes, after it's cooled off. While it's printing. So it oh. seems like this. It, it's almost in a circular pattern. So there's this sort of a central heat heater on under the heated bed, and then it's not effectively heating the rest of the bed. Or is no, it actually, this is these are heat elements. These this copper you see are all heat okay. elements. So it's not that, it's drafts. It's that it cools from the edge. A lot of that's why we're making the enclosure for that one and why I started printing this little barrier right here uh -huh. because it keeps air off of there. If it cools quickly, the area it's not working on will cool off and once it starts letting go, it'll go really quick. That one's doing okay so far. So the way we see the copper is that the, uh, when the heat's being transferred? Uh-huh. See, let me show you what I use when I build a bed. Let's see if I have any more of it. So this is what they used to use. This is just a PCB printed heated bread. That's what we have on there. This is a heat element. This is very similar if any of you gardeners have seed starting mats. This is about the same thing. It just has a um, thermistor in it that tells it what temperature it is and hooks up to power. This is what I built. Those are proprietary Xerox makes them for some of their stuff. Those are heat elements that are on adhesive oh, backing. Oh, I see now, yeah. So you just wire it up after you stick them to it, put a thermal cutout in for safety. Um, that one behind you is running on straight 120. So it heats up very quickly. The one on the Delta, eh, not so much. I have to wait, like I said, half an hour for it to heat up. But yeah, here's what some of those look like. These are DC ones, but oh, okay. that's what the heat elements look like. And there's different ways to do beds. Some people use blue painter's tape and glue stick. I like using glass and heat and hairspray. Um, he has a different material entirely. We're experimenting with sil different silicone like baking sheets that your cookies are supposed to come off really nicely of. Um, but this is the way I learned and that's kind of how I've been going right now and it works really well And the nice thing is after you get a layers and layers of hairspray you can scrape it off and clean it with alcohol right down to nothing But the like I said the big problems are materials problems How will different materials behave and there are so many parameters, but your main ones are extrusion temperature layer height extrusion speed bed temperature um, and movement speed really um, there's different sections. The, the outer area is a perimeter. The inner area is infill. You do those at different movement speeds. Non-printing moves, you can set the speed for that. Bridging, where you're going across an area. Um, you usually like to have an extra little fan pointing right at it that comes down. Uh, here's a good example. This snoot right here is to force air right down on the extruder. And that is to cool it right when it comes off um, so if you're bridging an area, that stuff comes out and it solidifies immediately without something to stick to. We have a hard time bridging with this machine right now where we'll be working with uh, extra fans in the future. There's also other ways. We have little air pumps that can move air to them and cool them. Uh, let's see if I have one of those. Yeah, little electric pump pumps there and you just shoot air at it through your hose. They all are, yeah. They're all little biscuit fans. I have a whole, I have some really tiny ones somewhere. 
in here I had a whole pile of like itty bitty baby ones. Well, there's some, there's a small one. It's not the smallest size by far, but we go much smaller than that. But yeah, oh, here's a good example of this tubing too, because you can kind of point this. If you don't mess it up like I just did, you can point that little tip right where you want it. And it'll just put a little jet of air exactly on where that comes out. Well, Jim, we probably have to get going, but maybe you could write your name on the whiteboard, your email address, so if okay. the have questions, they know how to contact you, or you can direct them to other people on your Print 3D, is that the name of the video? Yep. Trying to remember what the website of the forum is. We have a forum that's poorly maintained right now. Um, but I believe, I have to look at what it is. I think it's print3d.com or dot. Oh, yes, yeah. Nice. Thank you. There you go. You guys, whoever wants to keep that can keep it. It's, it's doing a little better, but I still don't understand why it shifts over like that. And that's something, most of your time is just troubleshooting. Yeah. I mean, I've been spending two hours and a lot of it is just Googling things, seeing, going through forums, seeing who's had the problem before. All right, I think we take like one more question and then we have to get going. Any other kind of questions you guys have for Jim? <coughs> well, thanks, Jim. Sure. It's been very cool seeing all these pretty printers in action. I like it. <laughs> uh oh, someone's got caught up with the gaming dice. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. Cool, thanks.